reading really something from um, my joy online and this one was published only yesterday the first of february 2021 and it was published at 50 minutes past seven in the morning my god mm -mm -mm -mm. it says Kung Fu Anochi teaching hospitals COVID-19 management team threatens to strike over unpaid allowances. Listen, and I read. Frontline health workers in the Ashanti region have said they will lay down their tools over unpaid allowances. Now that over 200 aggrieved workers attend to severe and critically ill COVID-19 cases at the Kung Fu Anochi teaching hospital, CAF. They are unhappy with what they say are disparities and discrimination in the payment of insurance packages promised them by the government. Now, caregivers have seen the emergence of COVID-19 discharge their duties, attending to critically ill patients, mostly with diabetes, comorbidities. My God have mercy. Stay on now. Now, as of January 26, 2021, at least 251 positive cases representing 4.9% of samples taken have been treated at the facility. But taking care of COVID-19 positive cases comes at a cost to medical staff as they risk their own lives. In fact, the team that manages COVID cases at Kofu Anoche are very efficient they work diligently and are able to use the little resources they have to be able to care for the patients well a doctor who spoke on condition of anonymity said i leave it here now i go to city news room and it says 19 cases in ghana up by 772 eight more deaths recorded and this one was published only uh, this afternoon, my brother, my sister, and uh, there's the second day of February 2021. It says, Ghana has recorded 772 new COVID-19 cases. Now, this pushes the country's active case count to 5,515. This was contained in an update by the Ghana Health Service, GHS. Today, Tuesday, February 2, 2021. Now, the update also indicated announced eight new COVID-19 deaths. Mm, 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 mm. This also raises the death toll to 424. <laughs> i leave it here. My brother, listen. If there are people you should respect in this country, people who are so adversely working, you can't leave out teachers. Who politicians always tell that their reward is in heaven. And it appears to me like politicians have been to heaven. And they have seen that there's a reward there waiting for teachers. Yet their reward is right here on earth. Politicians always tell teachers that their reward is in heaven. Because they have a way of looking down on teachers and cheating teachers in the name of religion. Show me one teacher in Ghana who is rich. No. How can they be rich? Their riches would be in heaven. They should die and become bones. Then Elijah or Elisha would be sent down. Even Ezekiel will be sent down to resurrect those bones. And when those bones are resurrected, then they can be rich when they reach heaven. But for now, no teacher has the right to be rich. Another group of people you must respect in this country, doctors. In fact, doctors see all kinds of situations. Right from blood, all the way to broken bones, tattered bodies, dismantled and dismangled bodies. They see night and day. Some of them have hallucinations. Some doctors become mad. Some of them have even become drunken men and women. All because they want to run away from the God things that they see. My brother, my sister, their colleagues elsewhere are pampered. Their colleagues elsewhere, my brother, my sister, are very much touted with glory and grace. Not in our country. 
Doctors are always on strike. In fact, when COVID-19 came, I remember that even right here at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, doctors were skipping, jumping fences when they heard that the very first COVID-19 case had arrived because they were ill-prepared. The disease was not even well understood. The country was so unprepared, even though some other countries had been prepared. For that reason, when it was rumored that the first case had arrived at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, doctors immediately decided to take cover. Skipping fences, running left, right and center, some breaking their legs and their arms because they skipped high fences for fear of COVID-19. At the end of the day, he who runs away and comes to fight another day is the hero. Doctors have been able to stand and withstand the pressure of COVID-19. I miss very inadequate, Lord God have mercy, um, supplies. Doctors have been able to stand firm. Nurses have been able to stand firm. In fact, if they say one COVID-19 patient, one COVID-19 patient has all of a sudden appeared at the Makola market, the whole of Makola market will be empty. Let a man announce or let some policemen announce at Makola that there is a COVID-19 man who they are trying to arrest and is around the market wearing all red. The whole market is going to be empty. People will run away and leave their tomatoes. Some will run away and leave their Kobe and Wadawa. The rest of them will run away, my brother, my sister, breaking limbs. All because of one suspected COVID-19 patient. Same thing with Ebola. Luckily, we never had an Ebola case in this country. To God be the glory. My brother, my sister. But doctors meet and treat COVID-19 patients night and day. Amidst very inadequate supplies and logistics. If you would not love people like that, then who would you love? My brother, my sister, yet in this country, doctors are least regarded. In this country, teachers are least regarded. In this country, doctors, a lot of doctors have become drunks. A lot of doctors, in fact, do not even encourage their children to become doctors. They want to be politicians. They want them to be pastors. Instead of going to school, they should go on a chair mountain. And speak in tongues, ba, 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 night and day, so they can be pastors. My brother, my sister, I'm speaking in parables to you. Those that have eyes, let them see. And those that have ears, let them hear. Listen, you travel to South Africa. You travel to Morocco, Algeria. I'm talking about Africa. I've not even gone out of Africa. And doctors are treated like demigods. But in our country, it's politicians who are demigods. Canada, Japan can sit on radio and TV. Insult everybody. Right from the president all the way to everybody. I like a man who speaks his mind. I like a man who is so patriotic about his country. But when you can read selfish undertones in some of these utterances, I will not be part of that. If a man loses a contract, he becomes angry. Then he comes on radio, he will back his throat off. If a man does not get what he's supposed to get, he is crying for himself and not the rest of the people who long never got what he has just not got. Who understands? Who understands? My brother, my sister, recently... It came out, but we long knew this, that Ghanaians are not actually fighting against corruption. But they would aid corruption if it favors them. How many people don't understand? I am saying, recently it came out that Ghanaians do not necessarily hate corruption. They actually love corruption as long as it favors them. My brother, my sister, think about it. The nation can be as corrupt as Sodom and Gomorrah. The nation can be as corrupt as Babylon. As long as it favors me, then I'm okay. 
If one million other people are dying night and day, and I am not dying, and my children are not dying, and we eat 10 triangular meals every day, my brother, my sister, I am okay. What a selfish serpentine generation. What a generation of vipers and cockroaches. They have no respect, my brother, my sister, for their own generation and the people, my brother, my sister, who work night and day so that they will be alive. I'm making a point. Now the doctors are saying that they want to go on strike. Over unpaid allowances. They are not even asking for salary increase. It says over unpaid allowances. In other words, it is a fee that has been agreed between them and the government, but they have been denied that over a period of time. I'm yet to see one politician who hasn't received a salary. I'm yet to see one politician whose salary delays by two hours. I'm yet to see a politician who would say he has not been paid for one month. Their salaries are on time. They receive their bonuses on time. They receive every per diem on time. My brother, my sister, yet those who form the backbone of our livelihoods, they are least respected. To God be the glory. I leave this thing here and I will appeal to the government in power. To turn an eye, just one eye, to the plight of the doctors. Turn another eye to the plight of the teachers and the farmers. If the farmers are encouraged to plant, like in what happened in the Gambia, in the days of Yahya Jame, Ghana would need to import so much rice from China. Ghana would not need to import plantain from the Ivory Coast. What is Tiobodon plantain doing? Go to the BA. Every centimeter you walk, you see plantain. Why can't we encourage the production of that rather than going to the Ivory Coast? A formerly war-ravaged country. My brother, my sister, to go and import plantains. Am I making sense, my brother, my sister? Let's think about our country. Let's think about our people. Let's forget all the selfishness. My brother, how much can you eat at all? That you are denying another man in the ghetto something small to keep him alive. You are so selfish. You have built your pot belly to the point that the devil himself is clapping for your greed. You are greedy. When it's time for you to get paid, when it's time for you to eat, that one never delays. But the people who are head over head, eye to eye, neck over neck, in contact with death, they can afford to have delayed salaries. Think about it and stop this greed and selfishness. Make sure that it works. I leave this here. My brother, I want to look at another thing. Now, how many of you listened to this program somewhere last week when we were talking about people who were committing suicide and all that? How many people? Now, my brother, you remember that I said when a country is becoming hopeless, when people lose hope, that is when you hear about suicide. Remember, I said that religious bodies, this is the time you need to stand firm. Encourage your people against suicide. Encourage people, my brother, my sister, against taking their own life and hopelessness. Yes, it is hopeless, but it is very hopeful in the sight of the Almighty Father. Depending on your faith, my brother, my sister, there is life and this too shall pass. Listen, two policemen within a week have committed suicide. Police people, two of them, within one week committed suicide. What is happening? What is happening to the police service? Let us descend and talk about the facts. Police people are one of the least paid in this country. President Atamils came in and decided to give them the single spine, including the uh, 
uh, uh, teachers. A single spine. A spine less. A spine is what is supposed to keep you upright. It's what is supposed to keep you in position. But when you are spineless, you become like an amorphous octopus. Who doesn't understand? If you are spineless, you become an amorphous spirogyra or paramecium. Better still, you become an amorphous octopus. Every direction they push you, you go. Every direction they push you, you go. Remember the former president, Mr. J.A. Kufo, His Excellency, said that the problem of this country is poverty, number two, on patriotism. We are not patriotic enough to stand for this country, the hustles and bustles of our ancestors. We are not ready to stand for the sweat and tears of our people. You are eating your belly full. You don't care about the next person's child. You think you are so smart. That is why you are eating every day. Now when you cheat a man in this country. They clap for you and say you are smart. When you steal from the people. They say oh it is okay. It is the government. My God have mercy. My brother my sister. Think about it. Police people are committing suicide. These are the people who are supposed to be taking care of you. They are like something that you need a microscope to see. Salaries of police. Yet, every day you push police there. You push soldiers there. To the point that even the wearing of masks. My God have mercy. The wearing of masks. Police would have to be on the street people to wear their mask where is the patriotism where is the so called big brother's keeper you have churches in every centimeter of the country yet the crime rate increases every now and then you have churches every centimeter in this country my brother my sister yet when you check it out the people who break the law are the same people who go to church they are the same people who believe that there is God. They are the same people who believe that you have to be your brother's keeper. What a paradox. My brother, my sister, it is time for the youth to stand up. It is time for the youth to kick out all, all these old useless people in power. They will continue to be rich. They are children rich and you will continue to be poor. Even mask, no mask you cannot afford. For you to use your one CD or so to buy a nose mask, you will go and buy Kenke and eat with raw pepper so that at least you can keep moving. One CD that you would use to buy a nose mask, my brother, my sister, you would use it to take care of your little child. This is reality. They continue to be rich. A priorities stared us in our faces and many were those who clapped for today they are in court boxing each other left right and center today they are in court fighting remember that every minute they spend in the court there they spend money from your pocket hallelujah how many people have spent? any second that they spent in the court the money is coming from your pocket. How are the supreme judges paid? How are all the lawyers paid? My brother, my sister, the nation would have to deal with electricity in the court. The nation would have to deal with water supply. Anytime they go on break, when they go into the bathrooms and flash water, you got to pay for it. The air conditioning is blowing and keeping them comfortable. You got to pay for that. Every second that they spend in the courts, you got to pay for that. They are there, boxing each other left, right, and center. You are hailing them. Go on, go on. Yes, justice must be served. Blah, 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 blah. When they get into power, the first people they forget is you. 
Why don't you stand firm? Why don't you rather become patriotic rather than partisan? That is why people like Ayinkura Carlos say that the NPP in them could not sit and just watch whilst the national agenda was prospering. What a paradox. What folly. What folly. My brother, my sister, Today, they are thinking about deputy ministers and they are appointing ministers and blah, blah, blah. And some people are all over the, the place trying to campaign for deputy ministers. People who have, who have been able to get nothing, nothing. Some of these people, common radio station, small radio station, manage this radio station, they have failed. Failed to, they want to be deputy ministers to take care of all how many people. And when you talk, you come out and say, oh, you are immature, or you have been too passionate about it. Hallelujah. The old men are gradually recruiting the young men and polluting them, poisoning them, and giving them the same venom of corruption, selfishness, wickedness, and foolishness. They say, when a fish begins to rot, it starts from the head. Think about it, my brother, my sister. Sometimes I walk on the street and people ask me, So, Krasta, what are you living for your children? I say, I'm living God and I'm living wisdom. When God descended on King Solomon, he asked for only wisdom. With wisdom, you have everything. But in our country, Everybody is thinking about money. Let's run out of money. Let's run out of money. That is what is making your politicians wicked and selfish. People do not speak the truth anymore. Because when they speak the truth, they can't eat. They respect their stomachs more than they respect the generation and generations to come. How many people don't understand this? When they speak the truth, they will step on the big corrupt man's foot. And he is the man who gives them food. So they become his stooges. And because they don't want to lose their food, they would not speak the truth. Yet let Sunday come. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. In touch, you would even think that, in fact, they are angels singing praises to God. Yet they are on the payroll of a corrupt politician that they know is corrupt. I will not support any corrupt politician. I will come out hard against anybody because the kind of creation that I am, the kind of creature that this creation has made me, I'm supposed to speak the truth. If you go hungry, I will speak the truth. No amount of hunger will let me glorify falsehood. And that is what I employ the youth to do. That is what I beg the youth to instill and inject into their DNA. When we all speak the truth. The problem with Africa is honesty. It's not slavery. It's our small, small, small sub problems. Sub, just like you go into an examination hall and there's a major question. The problem of slavery is nothing but a sub a passive problem. The main problem is the problem of honesty, which itself can be traced to slavery. Hallelujah. Be honest. Speak the truth. Call a spade a spade. In all aspects of your life, speak the truth. How many Ghanaians tell their real age? All over Facebook, I am plus one to the blood clot murderer. Idiot fool. You are plus what? They say it's personal. They don't want to tell their age. Because they are thieves. He's 70 years. Yet in his official document. He's 31. Because he can run away with the plus one. I am plus one. I don't do that. Every now and then I mention it on radio. I was on Monday the second day of September 1974. That gives me 46. Are you proud of the glory of God? 
that God has given you all this opportunity, all these days. Many died when they were not even born. They were aborted. A lot of them did not go beyond one day. Some did not go beyond one week. Some one year. You have grown up. They go plus one. So that you can corrupt your pages and say that you are 49 when you are actually 200 years old. 76 year olds, 100 year olds will rule you. That is why all these corrupt people will rule you. That is why all of Africa is all, 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 all men. Those who even say they are 76. Master, go and ask their mothers if they are still alive. On, on ask them from their graves, they will tell you that those who tell you they are 76, they are even 150. They don't speak it. Common truth is a problem to them. Plus one. Celebrate me. Today, plus one. And it has become the norm. If you don't want to say your age, forget about it. Just say it's your birthday and let it go. Plus one. So that what? They don't speak the truth. So if I tell my real age, I will retire early. So what? If you told your real age, the government will be able to work it better and tell the government to be able to take care of you whilst you are still active. That is why your football players, they go there on the 52 year olds are saying that they are under 17. Ghana. Zimbabwe, 52 year old men are running on football pitch and they are under 16. My God. And when you are running and you look in front of them, the goose stuff there, my brother, a year old cannot have those goods. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Nobody trusts Africa anymore. It's a continent of lies. Something that you don't need to lie about, you are all lying about that. You cannot be truthful. Every day, every night, you are lying. Even when you are praying, you are lying to God. God, I'm hungry. God, I'm hungry. God, please give me something to eat. You have a big bowl of fufu waiting for you. You have just eaten some fried rice and chicken. Fufu is waiting for you. And you say, God, I'm hungry. Lies! Morning, afternoon, evening. How can you prosper when you lie? Politicians, their middle name is lies. Lying left, right, and center. Lawyers are ready to defend you with the lie. As long as you pay them. What the hell is happening? Can you be true? I hate it when I have to draw examples from elsewhere. But to suffice it, I go to America. And I mistakenly drop a $20 bill. My brother. I go away. An hour later, I set my pockets and I say, what? Maybe when I was pulling my money around this point when I was going to uh, get my mail or I was going to do this, I might have dropped it there. I walk back there after one hour. If the knot is not lying down there, there will be a notice that, oh, somebody dropped this money here. Please, when you come around, pick it up from this point. True or false? True or false? I go to America and if the price is $5 per item, whether you are green, blue, yellow, white, whether you are tall or short, whether you are rich or poor, is the same price for everybody. Yet in Ghana, the plantain is five Ghana cities. A white man comes to buy, all of a sudden it becomes 50 Ghana cities. A Chinese man comes to buy, all of a sudden it becomes 20 Ghana cities. And when you ask them, they say, oh, Omoska, these people are rich. Did you get their money for them? Were you the one who worked to put the money in their pockets? No honesty. Attitudinal catastrophe. Attitudinal catastrophe, my brother, my sister. The attitude is rotting. The attitude is totally stinking. The stench is unbearable. Think about it, my youth. Until you stand up. And point it up with positive defiance that these useless old men, you have had enough that all these corrupt politicians, it doesn't matter whether you are their young or old, all the Paul Beers, all the Alasi Wataris, and all the Nanados, all of them, 
you walk up to them and tell them, say, yo, listen, enough is enough. When election comes, go around and give you money. They give you goodies, free electricity, free water, free this, free that. Right after election, you pay with a hook in your nose. Need I talk more? To God be the glory. I appreciate you. It's been the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushudo. This is where we speak truth to power. This is where we talk pertinent issues relating to the development of our people, our continent, our land. Can I go to Cameroon now?